Hello and welcome everyone. This is the ninth episode of Mouse Adventure Devlog. I had another two weeks of break from development and posting devlogs since I was quite busy again and I had some other work to do. However, I had chance to do bits of work every now and then and most of the work I did was about level selection UI and some of the tools and code snippets to support it. For those who are new, Mouse Adventure is a maze crawler puzzle game based on procedurally generated mazes. It takes place in a cartoony world with light-hearted storyline. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to be notified when a new devlog is out. I really appreciate your support. In the last episode I talked about the hubs area we are planning to put into the game, how it will be used, how the NPC companions will operate in this area and how the player will use portals to get to the level selection screens. Past two weeks I decided to focus on working on the level selection screen UI. In the previous prototype of the game I was using a basic grid of buttons to pick the level and start playing. This time I wanted to go for functionally simple yet visually somewhat more detailed system. One idea that came to my mind was ordering the level selection buttons in different ways and then connecting them to each other using lines to create a path. This way I could create different patterns for every difficulty of level selection UI. About level difficulties I'm planning to have 5 difficulties in the level selection pages uh, along with the tutorial which is going to be in the beginner levels. Difficulties will affect the size of the maze and the type and count of the traps and enemies in that maze. I quickly started prototyping the UI and with the help of line render and some shaders I was able to achieve this outcome. Wavy wobbly lines between the level buttons. I also created buttons with star indicators of the levels to give information about success and the completion of the level. For now the completion will be related to the percentage of the visited cells in the map and the collection percentage of the items. UI wise it's close to be done, however level selection system is a large and tricky component of the game. This part of the game will be setting and receiving certain information to be able to display things correctly. This makes it tightly coupled with the game controller and some other components. I was spending some time to think about how the lines of communications for these parts and components should be and deciding on a save and load system for this. Initially, I had a basic save and load system for settings and inventory. However, this time for level selection, it has to be a little more complex than that. And I want to get it right and scalable. The idea is not to need altering the save load system every time structure and the number of items change in the level selection UI. So it must not be anything hard coded, but flexible and self adapting system that understands the deltas between previous and the current changes and, and rearranges the save files and loads it properly. I haven't figured it out just yet, but decided to divide and conquer the problem. To help me with quick saving certain data, I wrote a small plugin that serializes objects in JSON and saves and loads them using player prefs. I already pushed this plugin to GitHub and I'm planning to add some more tooling around it to make it more useful and visual. You can take a look at it and use it, even provide feedback if you would like to. Also this week I decided to focus on making a proper scroll snap component for Unity that I wouldn't only use in this game but across all my projects. First I checked some assets in the asset store and some tutorials on YouTube but the issue is people either make their tools very unoptimized and overly complex to serve all purposes and all cases which is something I always try to avoid and caused me to go for implementing my own solutions for such problems. In my opinion, one component should serve only one purpose. You can't really make it do everything. If you do, that is wrong and this actually breaks the idea of having mono behavior components. So investigating Unity's native components source code, I came up with the idea of making my own scroll snap component that looks, acts and works just like a native Unity component. Simple and useful. I'm pretty proud of the work I did. It's flexible, clean, optimized and works smoothly. Okay, maybe I'm bragging too much about it, but I really like what I did and it's really rare for me to do it. I'm quite uh, critic about my work as well. The component I made still lacks certain features such as infinite scroll or supporting different multiple pages in one view. These are again some just extra features for it. I may not implement them. But for this game and most of the time when I need it, it just covers what is needed. 
Along with this, I did some research and tests on Addressable's system in Unity, uh, which is a system to replace the asset bundles in the future. What is incredible about it is that you can set your system to publish and receive your assets remotely, which is an awesome feature for creating dynamic and downloadable content for your games such as extra levels or DLCs. This system still looks premature and many things are not really clear. It doesn't even have a proper documentation but some Word documents uh, Unity provided. Neither from the docs or examples I couldn't find enough information to set remote settings. Maybe I wasn't really looking clearly. Uh, seems like rapidly changing project. Even the UI uh, was quite different from some tutorials from a couple of months ago. Seems like this project still needs some time to be finalized and become something more solid. So probably I will stick with uh, asset bundles for now. The reason I was looking into is I was planning to download uh, maze levels at the spot. So certain things, baked uh, light data and other stuff might make their size larger. So it would be better to delegate downloading this later, this, so the size of the game doesn't um, become so large. So overall, this past two weeks been slow for me, but I was able to learn new things and uh, put the things I learned into practice with some smaller projects and tools to use in the game. I will try to focus on getting the level selection done nice and proper, uh, finalizing how it should communicate with the game controllers and the save load system, and that is going to lift a heavy burden from my shoulders definitely. And sorry for sounding really sleepy uh, in this particular podcast it's it's around 2 a.m at night right now and i'm actually quite sleepy i just wanted to record this and uh just be done with it because i do not want to delay recording more more devlogs lazier i become less devlogs i start ignoring the devlogs so i just i just told myself i have to do it thank you for watching please like the video subscribe to the channel not to miss the next episode take care